a guy lost it diving one time and, and it, would, it fell down to the, to the sea, at the bottom of the sea. A few, I don't know, a number of years later, somebody dived down, found this watch. So they picked it up. Um, hey guys. Thanks for joining me. We're gonna talk a little bit about watches. Of course, always cars. So let's go ahead and get started. So obviously what I have here uh, is the Rolex Daytona in stainless steel. Um, it's the new one. And it's got the black ceramic bezel and of course the white dial. Now, of course there's a nickname and people are loving to give nicknames to the Rolexes. And this is called the Panda because it looks like the face of a panda, right? Very popular, very hard to get and uh, it's a chronometer, uh, chronometer, basically. It's really a stopwatch, right? But it was uh, named after the race, the 24 hours of Daytona and uh, endurance race. So for 24 hours, you know, the team races and, and so um, the best time, most amount of laps. And, and so they use this as a, a calculation for the speed of um, each in a minute how many laps can can you do so it, it's a it, it has that function here okay so that's the it's a it's basically a stopwatch for rolex and been so hard to get for so many years um but now all the sport watches are hard to get um from the and what i have here is a couple more um rolex sport watches here Right. This is the GMT, which is really a world time zone watch. It's a it's a time zone watch where where wherever you fly to, you can adjust the bezel to the um, the time difference from your local home time, and the third hand will show you what the time is in that you know in that um, space that uh, location. Uh, because um, this is in the blue and in red, people give it the nickname the Pepsi. There was an old Pepsi that was done like that. It got discontinued. Now this is the new Pepsi. Now in the GMT, they also have black and blue, which is, they call it the Batman. Um, and with the strap, this is the Jubilee uh, bracelet, which kind of in the very original was the matching for this model, the GMT. And, um, but in recent um, years with the, with the Batman, the, the black and blue, they put a, uh, oyster bracelet like this bracelet on there so they call it Batman and then when they put the Jubilee bracelet on that same uh, head they call it Batgirl <laughs> and then they had stopped doing the um, the Batman but now they're coming back with it so there's going to be available of the the blue and black um, GMT Master 2 with the option of either Jubilee bracelet or oyster bracelet so that's kind of cool I, I really like this watch I wear it a lot because I'm a traveler and just it's convenient and then we'll move on to this one, the Submariner. Okay, the Submariner, really the green, uh, the green dial they, they did for the 50 year anniversary. When it, when it hit 50 years uh, anniversary for the Submariner, they, they did a special green dial. And then they, you know, they called it the Hulk, you know, um, because it was all green. Then there was a, this, this version here, which is newer, which has the green with the black dial. And I heard they called it Starbucks. But but uh, Submariner is really a diving watch. You know, it's a watch where you can you can use to dive way down um, for scuba diving and deep sea diving and so forth. Uh, famous people like Jacques Cousteau and and others wore that and um, you know dive down on their missions. Um, matter of fact, Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier wearing his GMT Master um, when he was flying. You know, breaking the the sound barrier. So there was a lot of cool things that milestone that these um these watches has 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 took in part in history and um, another cool thing with the submariner is um, a guy lost it diving one time and, and it would it fell down to the to the sea at the bottom of the sea a few i don't know a number of years later somebody dived down found this watch so they picked it up um, and they saw the serial number found out who the owner was because we registered the the uh, the watch with the serial number found out it was returned back to the owner in working condition. It was still working. Water did not get in. And they just kind of, you know, re maybe refinished it and redid the dial and gave it back to the owner. So that's just amazing story how, how these, uh, 
watches are so indestructible, so well made. So with the, um, the Rolex Daytona, uh, or the Panda in this case, I think the watch that would, I would drive, when you come, a lot of people ask me, well, you come to the garage, which car do you pick? Of course, it depends on the venue, where I'm going, uh, if the venue is a racing venue, is it a beach venue, is it a meeting venue, business meeting venue, is it a dinner, is it whatever, right? And so that plays a lot into that. Um, is that a car rally, you know, classic car rally, you know, folks are a little older, you know, they like, they appreciate the, the classic car. So there's a lot of reasoning, but let's say that is all figured out and I still have a choice. Then of course I would try to pair it with the, my watch to see which one kind of, you know, goes with it. And so, you know, the, 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 so let's say the Rolex Daytona, you know, I'm wearing black and, and kind of a gray uh, outfit. I would think the, the F8, my new F8 Spider would be the ideal car for that, right? And, you know, it hap happens to match my outfit, it matches my watch, and, you know, it's just, uh, it'd be, it'd be, it's, it's perfect. So, you know, um, the Rolex Daytona is the cool thing. I mean, that this watch is, I guess, the most related to automobile and car racing because, again, the Daytona was named after the 24-hour Daytona race in Florida. That's been happening many years. As a matter of fact, the winner of that race would get a uh, Rolex Daytona. They would engrave in the back as far as which race and all that kind of stuff. And I know that the race car drivers really appreciate as a memento or uh, a trophy of course they got a real trophy for from the from the race but having rolex being the sponsor of the race having a rolex daytona to um with the engraving of of the winning of what where they won and that race and the and the date is so precious to them i know that i've talked to many um drivers that so that have been in that 24-hour daytona race and so appreciate the watch they got from Rolex. So, you know, it's really, um, again, uh, so part of uh, uh, motor racing and, and, and of course, you know, uh, timepieces. Now, again, I, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing this watch. I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I would drive the F8 Spider. You know, the F8 Spider is a mid-engine V8 twin turbo car. And, you know, as technology changing so quickly, um, this could be the last of the V8 um, twin turbo car because it would then it could change to hybrid. It could change to a different configuration. Maybe you know, you know, F8, 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 uh, uh, six cylinders or something like that. But the kind of classic what we know as the mid-engine V8 um, cars, where either naturally aspirated, not having turbos, or having turbos, is could be changing it and i understand this is one of the last series or made in this way they'll still have a mid-engine v8 or v6 car that will have to produce more horsepower and be faster but this the f8 is seems to be the last and and the spider being that's convertible i always like the convertible so this is um it's a, it's a great car you know and i like that the the mid-engine cars better not because they look more sleek and they're more lower and the, and so forth but in a in a in a in a racetrack which i've driven a lot of times on it just the balance i feel more comfortable with the balance and as you as you break and you turn and the apex the the weight shift everything just seems to be more um more balanced than something that is front engine heavy or or what have you so it's um I think it's really a great balance car and, and, and so forth. Of course, being V8, it, you know, you only have certain powers on it. So that's why the LaFerrari would be the best because the LaFerrari is a mid-engine V12 um, hybrid car. So it's got that balance, but yet it's got more powerful uh, engine to, to really make you go. So that I actually, on a track, I feel most comfortable in performance in, in the LaFerrari. Um, certainly... Um, so that that that's why I feel about. But normally under a V8, V8 um, twin turbo mid engine, this this is the car to have. And the V and the F8 
as I understand, is the about the same power as the 488 pista, which I have as well. And um, being this is a regular production car, and the 480 pista is more of a limited and track car, so this is already having the same power now as the 488 pista. So it's uh, it's interesting where Ferrari is going to go with this. <laughs> Hey, thank you everybody for watching. I think it's time to go, so we'll see you next time.